Okay, so here we are, uh, finally at the Linux Tech in Basics, uh, which is not very different uh, theoretically from what we discussed about Windows. Uh, I've just chosen Windows because it's uh, much more prevalent in the business environment. So, uh, what we can say about the similarities and the differences? Let's start from the latter. So. Uh, Linux is definitely different from Windows, uh, first of all, because it's basically free open source software that has been developed by uh, many, many enthusiasts. And uh, the concept of open source software gives it more potential to be secure. Okay, It's not always guaranteed that this potential will result in... Uh, actual security of the product but uh, potentially <laughs> it's more secure so uh, anyone can go there and uh, read through the sources and many people do and uh, they find vulnerabilities and they report them and the Linux kernel maintenance teams and the various open source vendors uh, software developers take that input and uh, fix the vulnerabilities really really fast so patch cycle for a critical vulnerability is much faster for Linux than Windows. Now it's uh, relatively, it's comparable I would say, but uh, back in the day in the 90s you could wait uh, a couple of days or even weeks from uh, to, to, to update to um, come from Microsoft and uh, for Linux it was like a matter of hours. Uh, okay, so what are the main differences? First of all, the file systems are slightly different. If in Windows you see these drive letters that are the start of uh, the directory tree of a file system, uh, in Linux it's normally uh, starting from a single root of all file systems and then physical devices are mounted, mounted to specific directories normally the subdirectories of media or mnt uh, directory in the root directory <laughs> like that yeah so there is root um, normal slash not not backslash used in windows but normal slash uh, is called root and uh, there everything starts so there are different uh, directories in the root uh, they are traditionally named uh, by the purpose they exist, yes, yeah, so they contain different uh, type of data and that's why binary data normally is put into directories uh, named bin and uh, there is a USR directory for user installed uh, programs and libraries and uh, there is shared directory for shared libraries and shared data and different uh, help information and so on. So this is quite traditional and uh, I would not say that that's standardized, but uh, yeah, it's common. Okay, so it's pretty much everywhere named the same. So uh, lib contains libraries, uh, modules contains kernel modules, device drivers and so on. Uh, Differences in memory and process execution uh, from the standpoint of exploitation, they are almost non existent. Okay, so uh, the equivalent of ASLR and uh, DEP uh, have been introduced into Linux kernel uh, much earlier than uh, Microsoft did uh, implement them in their operating system. So there are pretty much the same ways of exploiting memory corruption bugs and uh, uh, there are uh, very similar ways to control and prevent that. So Linux is basically written in C programming language that is uh, a little bit higher level than assembly. So it has these structures, these high level structures, abstract uh, notions of uh, functions and uh, structures actually and uh, uh, all that stuff, but uh, it still allows uh, direct access to memory. So most libraries contain really insecure functions like uh, string copy that basically just takes 
a piece of data and the binary copies it to another address that uh, allows all sorts of nasty things to uh, to appear lately in the history of this software so that's that happens that happens a lot sometimes just uh, misspells a secure variant of a function uh, by its uh, insecure equivalent and uh, all this uh, remote uh, exploitation drama starts over again so that that's that's what <laughs> open source world looks like uh, and uh, one more very important thing that is that uh, uh, just in general you can imagine as everything in Linux uh, as uh, files of some sorts. There are block files, there are text files, uh, even pseudo random number generator in uh, Linux is just a file you can read from internally, you know, so uh, that's that's quite quite interesting and uh, everything uh, of this kind is uh, placed in the root uh, directory named uh, dev yeah so uh, you just come in there and you see if something you can you can find there uh, you can read from this is basically a device driver <laughs> and you can write to some files as well so for example uh, dev slash uh, sound is uh, is your sound card so a very interesting trick is very popular. <laughs> Back when I was young, it was really uh, funny. <laughs> Maybe I was I, I don't know what's the nice word uh, is, but uh, we just uh, we just run cat program that basically takes the text file normally, yeah, and uh, uh, shows it uh, on uh, the console. Uh, we you can redirect the output of that so you can just take a arbitrary file and um, take the output of it yeah and put it some to some to some device yeah or to some file so uh, we used the uh, dev sound for that matter and we uh, have uh, uh, we have written the whole operating system kernel to it <laughs> and listened how it sounds <laughs> it's quite it's quite uh, zen, you know. It's philosophical. You just you just hear how the binary code sounds in your uh, headphones. That's quite quite interesting. You cannot stand that for long, but uh, but you should try. And in any Unix-like operating system, it looks like that. So in Linux and FreeBSD, in any HPX or IBMX, that's that's normally like that. All the devices are files. You can read from them. You can write to them, uh, and so on. Okay, so uh, access control that is employed by Linux is uh, slightly different in implementation, but uh, on a higher level, it's uh, it's very similar. So there are users. Users have passwords. The users are joined into groups, and the groups uh, are having permissions over different files, which uh, represent everything in the environment. Okay, so. Uh, if file is owned by one user but uh, run by another user, it uh, inherits uh, the permissions of the user that runs that process, not not that owns that process. Unless there is a sticky bit installed on that executable uh, that lets uh, everyone in the system run this process with the original uh, user permissions of the user that have that has created that file. Okay, so it's quite more complicated but uh, if you if you're trying to figure out the specifics of how it works you understand uh, you more and more understand with time that it is much more logical and uh, has more analysis behind that more mathematics yeah so there are uh, mathematically proven access uh, control models behind that uh, whereas in windows it's uh, much more uh, much more reactive yeah so Microsoft has created answers to the questions that uh, business environment uh, uh, generated for for the company okay uh, Linux is more natural in that regard so uh, 
other differences in in user environment may uh, may be, for example, that uh, working from a console is much more uh, uh, not not popular i would say it's much more productive on linux okay so there is not much uh, of a user land for console uh, interaction with the operating system in windows but linux generally it comes from that it everything graphical was uh, the extension of uh, what was going on on the console level so many many uh, graphic uh, user interfaces they are just uh, the wrappers of uh, some console tools that are run in the background while you see this nice picture on your on your screen so graphical user interfaces are really cool now for linux so they uh, they do not reflect the operations of Windows, but they realize they implement all the specifics, all the required user tools, yeah, texting processors, web browsers, uh, graphic uh, editors, and uh, all the stuff that is normally available on a Windows desktop is available in uh, and in a modern uh, Linux distribution as well, but. Uh, it definitely requires some skill yeah to use that on a desktop still however in 2016 we can say that finally we see a real advancement of uh, Linux on the desktop but uh, it still requires some technical knowledge you can train an average user to do that uh, however uh, to to get the most out of Linux you have to know console and uh, that's where hacking starts and uh, there are cases <laughs> when people are just uh, uh, are just accused of uh, malicious hacking because they were working from the console uh, or their Linux desktop uh, in the airport lobby. You know, so these are unfortunate cases of uh, low user awareness of uh, what are the different types of operating systems. Uh, so console is prevalent in Linux it's much more productive than in Windows and for some users it's still much more productive than graphic interfaces for Linux machines okay